Okay, we are about ready to start class. Um, we've got fewer people, no tape. Uh, so if you could like scoot, scoot a little closer so maybe we can hear each other and, and, and David won't have to wear himself out sprinting from back there to over there. Uh, all right, so, so we've got. Do that again, so, I <laughs> so, so we've got a commenter here. One just came down front, and one's moving. All right. So, thank you. I know some of you, you know, you you got that spot in that that pew, and it feels just right. But who are you looking for? Tom. Tom? I didn't see him here this this morning. Okay, he must have gone with Greg. Yeah, I was I was trying to to spot. So you got, you got Ken back here, you got, you got Crystal, and Sean. Uh, yeah, where, where's 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 Carol? Carol may have gone to. The, she'll be back. All right, I'll have to I'll have to make sure she come down here. <laughs> All right, a new quarter. Um, icebreaker. What's your what's your, uh, your favorite Jesus teaching? Your, your favorite teaching of Jesus? Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount. Any particular part of it? Good. You'll love class this morning. <laughs> Somebody else. Beat up the people. I, I, I don't. I don't think he beat anybody up. Well, I have to. I have to. I have to read that one before the quarter is over. <laughs> Garden of Gethsemane. John 17. Yeah, it's a good prayer. This, this section's been quiet. Fav, your favorite uh, teaching of, of Jesus? Man, all right, so I, never mind. I, I, th I thought I was going to make the point of, what? I like the fish and loaves, the good prayer, how God provides. Okay, how the, the prayer with the fish and loaves and God providing. Mine's the same as baby Jesus. I don't know if somebody else already said Oh, that. yes. I, I wouldn't have guessed that one, but so Carol's favorite is the love the Lord your God and, and uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Very good. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about all of those uh, and uh, quite a few more over the course of this quarter. Uh, this morning, we're going to start out by reading the Sermon on the Mount, um, Matthew 5 uh, through 7. Uh, many of Jesus' best-known teachings uh, are found in, in that one sermon. Uh, so, uh, if you want to turn there and read along, uh, or you can just uh, listen to me. And when, this, when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? 
It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear. Not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will be... Uh, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there in front of the altar. Go first and be re reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are uh, still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has been said anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a woman so divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is, his, it is his footstool. Or Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Slim, simply let your yes be yes, and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, Turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are, you not, are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than the others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them, if you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward, 
will reward you. But when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast... Do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who, are you, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has a, uh, enough trouble of its own. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? when all the time there's a plank in your own. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask and it will be given to you. <clears throat> Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will, be, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to you, or to those who ask him? In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, 
For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter th through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the, that house, and it fell with a great crash. So, who thinks that we ought to take these teachings seriously? That calling someone a fool puts you in danger of hell? That we really ought not to retaliate if someone strikes us on the cheek, but rather offer them the other cheek? That we should love our enemies? Our it is hard stuff. So several weeks ago, I uh, mentioned to a few guys uh, the idea I had for this class, and, and uh, Dr. Jed uh, sent, sent me this book, uh, What If Jesus Was Serious? So it's an interesting little book that breaks down the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, <clears throat> So I'll, I'll borrow some ideas uh, from that book, uh, but it's not going to be our text. But his approach is exactly what I had in mind. To examine Jesus' teachings and talk about what it looks like to take Jesus seriously. Now this morning, Paul was talking about what Christian behavior looks like in the home. Um, and this class is going to be more, what's, what's it look like to live uh, in God's kingdom? Uh, so, uh, Sky, the, the author of this book, he, uh, starts the book uh, rela relating the reaction of a Bible class he was teaching after doing just what we did this morning, uh, reading the Sermon on the, Sermon on the Mount. And he asked them uh, if they thought we were supposed to do that. He says most of them considered these teachings to be kind of profound platitudes. Uh, but not something Jesus really expected of his followers. Uh, you know, it was too hard, or, you know, it shows, you know, how great perfection is, and, you know, and that we'll never reach it. Um, but uh, Sky makes the point that Christianity may not be making the impact today, not because Christians are too Christian, uh, but because we don't take Christ's teachings seriously. Um, so, over the course of this quarter, I hope we wrestle with Jesus' teachings this quarter. We're going to ask some hard questions, uh, dealing with some hard teachings. Um, if I or whoever's teaching comes across sounding judgmental, uh, I assure you we're not. I'm, uh, I'm painfully aware of uh, planks in my own eye uh, and, and my imperfections. Um, and I know some of, um, you know, and anybody that teaches you is going to be wrestling uh, with uh, those ideas and, and uh, what that teaching has meant in their life. Um, so I'm teaching this with a, a fair amount of trepidation. Um, but let's... I want to revisit how Jesus closed out this sermon. He says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. 
the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. We'll talk more about these words later. Um, but I see no indication that Jesus didn't expect his followers to try and put these teachings into practice. Um, so a couple of concepts I want to get out there, uh, kind of just framework for the class. You heard mentioned a lot of times kingdom of heaven. Um, in here, you'll hear it a lot more. Many of the parables Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like whatever, and he launches into a, to a story. Um, so there's, there's three terms that are used a lot in, in the New Testament, um, especially in the Gospels. Um, one of them is kingdom of heaven, one is kingdom of God, and one uh, and eternal life. Um, so one source counted that kingdom of God appeared 68 times in 10 of the different New Testament books. Well, kingdom of heaven appeared 38 times, only in Matthew. So apparently when Jesus said kingdom of God, Matthew heard kingdom of heaven. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> John's writings make little use of, of either one of the kingdom phrases, but he speaks a lot of eternal life. Um, so to properly understand a lot of Jesus' teachings, it's important that we understand the meaning of these terms. So what do they mean? What's, what's kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God mean? So I thought about, a lot about this. Um, oh, if you thought a lot about it, let Dave get the mic to you. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about this for a while, but because um, we're told to seek first his kingdom. And if we don't understand what the kingdom is, then we can't really seek first his kingdom. Um, I, I've come to the, the understanding that, that our understanding of, of heaven and the kingdom of heaven is, you know, for a lot of people, it's someplace we're going to escape to later on. I, I utter, utterly believe that, you know, when Jesus came and um, was baptized and started his ministry and died on the cross, that that, that inaugurated the kingdom of heaven. Um, and I like uh, the phrase that I've heard uh, Wes McAdams use a lot, that the kingdom of heaven is, is already and not yet, meaning that it's, it's been inaugurated, but it's not yet been fulfilled. And when Christ returns, it will be fulfilled. So, so I truly believe that the, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, we're living in it right now, and our job is to... Is to help build it. God will build it. Christ will build it. But we're to, to lay, help, help sort of lay the foundation and build it, build it stronger. And so if what we're seeking is a place far, far away in another, you know, after we die, then I don't think we're, we're, we're thinking about it right. I think if we're thinking about what we can do right now to build the kingdom, then I think we're, what, we can make better sense of what Jesus is asking us to do. And it, 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 it impacts our lives more. Carol. So much easier now that the tape's not there. Um, you know, I've always heard the, the kingdom is the, the rule and reign of Jesus Christ, and that sounds kind of vague, but, you know, I just think about kingdom. It's where somebody's reigning, and if Christ is reigning, where is that happening? And, you know, I don't want to say that the kingdom equals the church, but certainly what you're talking about here on earth that's where Jesus is reigning. And, and that that, you know, if I'm seeking first the kingdom, then I'm looking for people to follow Jesus here and to be with Jesus in heaven. And to me, that's just, that's, that's my whole purpose is following Jesus so that we can be with him for eternity. And that, that's what matters and that's what we need to seek after. That's what I think. Thank you. Anybody else? Those are good thoughts. Galen's over there wanting to say something. <laughs> okay. So, um, so 
So do, do they mean the same thing? It's kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, and eternal life. Are those, are those the same, same concepts? Sean's thinking hard. Because even people in hell are going to have eternal life. Yeah. I don't know if I call it life, but. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the way John, when John's using it in the Gospels, uh, he, he's, he's talking about, uh, about the eternal life with God. Um, well, but, I'm answering your question. Okay. <laughs> I'll be, be more careful about how I ask Sean questions. <laughs> So, uh, Dallas Willard defines it this way. See what you think of this. He says that the kingdom of, of heaven, uh, or kingdom of God, is where what God wants done is done. Hmm. So, where what God wants done is done. Um, so, Jesus' teachings are intended to lead us to prepare us for an eternal life where what God wants done is always done. That's, yeah. It, we, well, I think we tend to think of the kingdom of heaven as a place, mm -hmm. right? As, as whether it's somewhere else or whether it's here, but I think it's in us, right? So that's why the spirit is given to us so that we can be the kingdom of heaven, which is eternal life. Bible does try to shoot for is for you to get there. That's what the most important thing is. Just get there. Seems like that's the message I've always gotten from Christ on this. Yeah. And to, to kind of throw back to an idea of, that was uh, in mere Christianity um, was, is the idea that this life is kind of our, 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 our practice for eternal life to shape us, to prepare us for how we're going to be in eternity. Um, and uh, we, we don't always get it right, um, but hopefully, uh, you know, throughout our life, we get it more right and are, are more prepared for of what Jesus wants to be. Yes, Sharon? For, <clears throat> for me right now, with the things that have been going on in our world, the past few years and now with the, the war in the Ukraine, I think when we have a kingdom, I think we can see a little bit more clearly if you're gonna have a kingdom, there's gonna be forces that are gonna wanna try to combat that kingdom. And I can see uh, very clearly now, much more so than I did when we were at peace and, and life was good for everybody around the world, um, or at least in our world, uh, I see the kingdom rising up more. I see the, the, the kingdom in the Ukraine fighting the forces of evil. Um, and I see the darkness very clearly, more clearly than I've seen in a long time. Uh, but I'm very encouraged to know that the kingdom has already, the battle's been won. And, um, and I'm very glad that I'm part of that kingdom. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I, tag I knew on. He was thinking. <laughs> well, I'll just tag on to something that you said about Dallas Willard. Uh, he he talks about when he talks about the kingdom of God, and our uh, the all the concept somebody mentioned already, but not yet. Um, that if as kingdom people, as we live out the kingdom here on earth, when we move to the fully realized kingdom, we will know exactly where we are, because we've already been living it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, so he kind of throws that out there. It's kind of a good um, uh, pathway to try to, to find that it really won't be a surprise because we've been doing it. Uh, 
Okay. In Colossians, it says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We're in the kingdom. We are. So, yeah, very much to, to Jed's point, we're, we're not living to one day go to heaven. We, we are choosing to whether we're going to live in the kingdom of heaven right now. Okay. Uh, one other uh, idea. So what did Jesus say were the most important commandments? <laughs> yeah, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, strength, depending on which uh, version you're, you're reading, and love your neighbors yourself, right? Um, <clears throat> so those were old teachings from Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Uh, they were very well known, if not particularly well practiced. Uh, I'm convinced that most of the teachings that we're going to look at can be tied to, to, well, at the time I wrote this, three, so I read more, kind of found maybe a fourth one. But these three, um, how much God loves mankind. Um, and it, uh, how to, te to teach us how to love God and how to love one another. Um, and then there were some teachings about how to advance the kingdom, which probably will f would fall under one of those three. But as we approach each of these teachings, we're going to be asking ourselves some questions. If, if the teaching is demonstrating God's love, then we're going to ask ourselves if we believed God loves me enough to do whatever he said. What fear, worry, or control would I release um, really believing that? If Jesus is teaching us how to love God, we will ask ourselves how we can do that better. If a teaching explains how we should treat each other, we'll stretch the limits we have used to make ourselves comfortable with our current adoption of that teaching, um, such as love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Um, we'll, we'll kind of explore just how big a concept that is. Um, because there are, there are many voices in Christianity that, that I've heard recently um, that apparently missed that teaching. <laughs> um, because of the things that they're saying and, and it causes me to, um, to struggle. Um, any other comments? Any, any of the guys fired up and want to sign up to teach a class <laughs> on, on your, the thing that you, you wrestle with the most? One of the things that has been taught to me that I gotta say I struggle immensely to actually grasp and live out is is the idea that if the kingdom is already here and I already have eternal life that in a way means that I'm immortal and God's work is already in progress and the God's plan is already on its way to completion how does that change how I act in the world like how much fear would that remove um, how would I interact with people? How would I deal with circumstances differently if I could actually grasp that? I wish I could get a hold of it, but it's hard. Yep. Yeah, and we, um, I, we're, we're all going to be familiar with a lot of these teachings. Um, I'm probably not going to reveal anything new to you this quarter, but the, the whole um, kind of... Uh, Opening our eyes to, to you know, whether we're uh, coming up short on a, on a teaching, if we could do it better, 
better represent God's kingdom, better live in God's kingdom um, is, is my whole aim. Just yep. building on what David had to say, just remember the words of Christ. You know, he said, I have gone to build a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. And then I love Peter's writings. I think Peter reflects Jesus so clearly when he says, there is a home being built and protected and curated for us, that we, we have this the home of the soul. And I, I love that old hymn, you know, the home of the soul. But we're, we're just, we're here temporarily. We're in, we're in the kingdom that has already come. But I, I think of it almost like retirement. You know, I think about my folks, you know, they worked a long time and worked hard. And for years, they, they put money away, and they built the place that they're going to spend the rest of their life. And we haven't, had to, we haven't had to put any money away. The price was paid. And the home is, while we are in the kingdom here, while Christ does reign in his bride, the church, here, we have the home that is also waiting for us as well. And so as we do toil and labor here, and sometimes for people that are not good people, we can remember, like, we're working for the Lord, and we have something better, a reward and inheritance waiting for us. And he says we're storing up treasures there. Oh. Yeah, David. David. On the way. Got, got one here, and then to Carol. Where, where, where? Uh, okay. We live in, in the United States of America. The United States of America has laws and rules, and according to Romans, we are to obey the authorities mm -hmm. that be. But Paul said we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We have a nation in this kingdom, all of our own, under God. And, and in that nation, we go by the laws and the rules according to the head of that nation, which is Christ. And therefore, we heed his teachings, and we strive to do his will with the help of the Holy Spirit. We have everything going for us as Christians. Thank you. Yeah. If you've not heard Sylvia's story about Pakistan and, and her, her telling a, a U.S. Embassy employee that she had dual citizenship and... Uh, you know, yes. She wasn't worried about losing her American citizenship because she had another one. Uh, that, that was really good. That was quite a story. You're right. Um, you know, okay, so in I have a question first. In class, are we going to be going into some specifics, some specific teachings in here? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, just looking through this, towards the beginning, I'm just kind of trying to put myself in the place of the people who were he was speaking this to originally um and you know pretty early on he says for i tell you unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and pharisees you will never enter the kingdom of heaven and for us because we've had the advantage of knowing a lot of things i mean you know at that time it's like wow unless you can be better than the people you have placed up on a pedestal and who are doing everything right and are you know high and mighty then there's no hope for you I'm kind of thinking that people are like, what? How is this even possible? Um, but he really is asking for things that are harder than what they were doing. And obviously we know that they, they didn't have it right anyway. But, you know, according to them, they thought they, I mean, they thought they did. And then the other people thought they did too. So I thought, what a challenge. Um, but, you know, as we're saying, if, if my whole goal is to bring someone to Jesus and I look at all these tough things through that and what Dave, like what David said, it does make it easier, but it's really hard to keep that focus if someone's slapping you on the cheek or grabbing your cloak or forcing you to do something, you know? And so to me, that's the big challenge is I gotta remember why I'm here every day. Thank you. Yeah. Final thought. Hope y'all come back and don't run to Greg's class next week. Uh, <laughs> There's no room. There's no room. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father, um, we're so thankful for your son, um, for the teachings uh, that he gave us that reveals your heart uh, and reveals what you, 
how you intended us to live um, and pray as, as we dig into these teachings that um, we honestly evaluate ourselves, we look honestly at the teachings and that um, we are, are moved to um, draw closer to you uh, and, and your uh, standard Father, we pray that you um, be with uh, your Christians, uh, your children in, in uh, Ukraine, um, that they will uh, display uh, your peace and your hope uh, in the face of fear uh, and, and be a light for you uh, in a dark situation. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.